Hi everyone, welcome back. Welcome to CSCI 100 Lecture 10. In this lecture, we'll be covering input and output as concepts and the actual ways that we do input and output uh, in Python. Before I talk about input and output though, I want to, uh, I, I want to share a couple of announcements. One is that your exam, uh, exams that you took uh, just over a week ago are now graded and the scores will be coming out shortly. So keep an eye out, watch Piazza, there will be an announcement. And that in announcement will have info on how you should interpret your score. As I mentioned before, these aren't high school exams where you're uh, expected to get a, a 90 or above for an A. This was a harder exam. And so uh, we'll give you some guidance on how to understand how you're doing, where you're tracking in the class. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what options you have if you're not happy with your score. My other announcement for you is just to mention that uh, you should be getting excited. Project 1 is going to be coming up soon. Probably sometime early next week, we'll have all the pieces that we need to do this project. The project is going to be Instagram filters or Snapchat filters. Really, many products nowadays have filters, but you'll be building uh, your own image processing uh, and applying filters to images. And hopefully we'll have a way for you to apply uh, those filters to your own images, if you'd like. OK. Now on to our regularly scheduled content for the day, input and output. I was feeling a bit nostalgic when, when I was making these slides, because here we are at lecture 10. You all have come so far. Uh, and I want us to review our programming journey and how we got here to understand how input and output fits into uh, your life as a programmer. So at the very beginning of this class, the first couple of lectures, we started with the idea of a program that executes some commands. Right? Just this idea that we write code in a .py file, and the computer is going to execute this code, and that code tells the computer what to do. And the first thing that we learned to do was just some basic commands. Um, we learned just math, 5 times 12, operations. Uh, we learned about exp just all sorts of expressions. And then we pretty quickly uh, got to the point of using variables. We realized that instead of using the actual numbers, we could use variables in our expressions, which allows us to write code that's not only more readable, but can also do more complicated things. Of course, this here is kind of a silly example. Uh, here, we only use x or y twice. We might as well have just had product equals 5 times 12. But you can imagine, and you have written code, where you reuse the value of a variable. Or, um, yeah, where you pass around the value of a variable. and uh, that allows your code to do more complicated things and solve harder problems for you. Then we got to the point of introducing a user, your very first user, which is you. Uh, and for this, we used the print function. And so this way, our code would not only just do things, it would not only make the computer think, but it also would make the computer communicate back to the user. So here, we had our computer you know, come up with a product, but then print that product out so that you as the user could see the result of the, of, of the computation. But that wasn't all. Next, we came up with this idea of providing input from the user, of taking input from the user, so that the user can provide input to the program. Uh, and then we can use that input in the execution of the, the problem. And the reason this was so useful was because now either you at different times or multiple different people could give different input to the program and get different output. And so your program could represent some set of steps to, to execute, uh, given some input from the user, and then providing some, some output back out. So we realized that a program that always does the same thing isn't that useful. It's nice when our program can uh, rely on something in the environment or in the real world and do something based on that. Uh, and yeah, this is a great example, right? 5, 12 gives us 60. Uh, 2 times 9 gives us 18. So for different uh, input numbers, we can get the product back out. 
Now, this is the concept of input and output. Uh, how did we actually provide input and where do we actually get output from the program? So how was our program interacting with the environment? Well, this whole time we've been using the terminal. And this terminal was this funky thing on the right in our IDE where we learned some commands for it. And it was also where we happened to run our program. We do python3solver.py. But then when we, uh, when we actually run our code, we'd find that the input would be provided uh, via this terminal, or a blinking box waiting for you to type something in, and the output would just get printed also back out to the terminal. Uh, well, you, I don't know how you felt about terminal, but terminal generally is kind of difficult to use, not very pretty. It, you'll also notice, before this class, you probably had never interacted with a terminal out in the real world. That's because people just don't use terminals to interact with computers. We have more convenient ways. Uh, and so today, we're going to learn other ways to provide input uh, and take output. Really, in the world, uh, what are other ways, types of input and output? Well, think about when you use your phone. When you use your phone, you have a touch screen. And the way you provide output is by touching the uh, input is by touching the screen somewhere. And then the code that's running on that device gets the X and Y location, gets the coordinates on the screen that are tapped. And the output ends up being some movement on the screen. Like when you tap the Instagram app icon, uh, really what the code gets is, hey, someone tapped this location on the screen. And it's the code that has to map that location to knowing that the icon is there and opening the program. And notice there might be other kinds of uh, other kinds of outputs. For example, if you tap on um, th there's other things you can tap on that will cause your phone to play a sound. So it's not the screen that's changing, it's actually the speakers that are vibrating to produce a sound. Uh, there's other buttons on your phone that'll cause your phone to actually buzz and vibrate. So there's a little motor in there that spins and causes that vibration, all based on your input of a touch. Uh, another kind of cool example. You can take input from uh, of all kinds, just from the environment. Uh, you could write code that takes input from a uh, temperature measuring device, maybe like a Bluetooth thermometer thing, and then controls some blinds in your house if you want to be controlling a smart home. So here you can see we could conceptually write some code that when no one's home, it'll keep checking the temperature from the sensor as our input, and then either lower or raise the blinds as our output. This is how we interact with the world. 